Hey guys, this is Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus and welcome to how to bake an occlusion map. So in previous tutorials, we have gone over how to assign occlusion and even drive textures with occlusion, but sometimes that can be very limiting. So I want to show you how you can export your occlusion map as a texture so that you can manipulate it in Photoshop and create some beautiful textures. So let's get started. This is our regular scene. And what we want to do is select all of our objects, right click, assign a new material, and we're going to add the Arnold AI ambient occlusion. So if we go to Arnold and render, you're going to see that the rendering is occurring and it looks awesome. So we press play so we can get a little closer. So the great thing about occlusion is that it gives you a gradient based on how close two objects are. This is fantastic when it comes to contact shadows. So for example, this crevice here is darker because the light, that you don't see is being emitted and not enough light is going in here. So therefore it starts to get dark. And if I go a little closer, let me go closer to my frame here. You can also see that it's really dark under below and also under the frame. So it gives us some really nice contact shadows. That's why occlusion is so popular. So what we want to do is take this information as a map so that we can texture it. This is very handy, especially if you're trying to create texture maps, but also if you're going to export them into other engines such as Unreal. It actually has an, an occlusion node that you can attach it to, or you can just put the occlusion on your textures so that it has a nice gradient color. So there's a multiple purposes as to why you would want to export ambient occlusion. It's also a great way to start rust, for example. So if you, you want to have complete control over your rust, you can just bake out the occlusion, paint in the dust or the rust or whatever you want, and you can use the occlusion map to tell you where. So let's go ahead and show you how it's actually pretty fast. So I guess maybe that's why I'm talking so much, but uh, let me show you how to do it really fast. So the first thing I need to do though, is to make sure that I select my objects and they're UV mapped. So if you look at my UV map editor, you can see that this desk is already UV mapped. Now you can download this at academicphoenixplus.com and you can download it for free so you can follow along and play with me. Let's go ahead and select our items that I want to have the occlusion map with. And the first thing I'm going to do is combine. So go under mesh, combine. So now it looks like it is one piece of geometry. I'm going to go ahead and delete by type history, edit delete by type history. So now there's no history and I probably want to relabel my, um, no, I guess desk geo is good. We'll just leave it as desk geo and these guys will just leave alone for now. We're just going to work on the desk today. All right. So under Arnold, there is a handy thing called utilities and we are going to go under render selection to texture. Now I'm going to browse and if I set my project, it should take me to my desk images and I created a folder already in advance and it's called baked occlusion. I just like to keep things separate because I know that it can get a little busy. So I, I want to make sure that everything's separated. So I created a folder called baked occlusion and I'm going to select it. The next thing I want to do is the resolution. Now 512 is really small. It's the size of like a stamp. So I would go for 1024 if you want something basic or 2048 if you want higher quality. Um, I'm going to do 1024 because otherwise the occlusion is going to take forever. Let's see the camera shape. You do want to increase your values. Even if it's just a little bit, the noise in here is going to cause some issues. So you don't, you're going to try to avoid as much noise as possible. And the way to do that is using increasing the samples. There's a couple of other things that you might want to play around with, but I'm going to leave mine a Gaussian and leave everything at default and just go ahead and click render. So it's going to start thinking really hard. And if you could hear my computer, it's really chugging. It's taking up all of its theoretically all up. Oh, there it goes. And that wasn't that bad. Back in the day, guys, back in the day, that would have taken forever. But now, thanks to Arnold, uh, it's awesome. OK, so if I go to my images and I go to my baked occlusion, you're going to see that he has an EXR file. I'm going to double click on this. It's going to open up Photoshop. EXR is one of the highest quality images that you can have. Uh, you can choose as transparency or alpha channel. I'm just going to go ahead and choose transparency and here we are our occlusion it looks just like our occlusion render except that now it is laid out as a map so this is the interior of the desk this is the cool part this is where the frame actually stands this is where the laptop and the lamp is is uh, located so you can use this to add extra things if you want to 
Uh, you can add a little dust. It's up to you what you want to do with this map. But it has some really great information. The brighter areas means that this is the top and the darker areas are the ones that doesn't see that much light. The nice thing about this is that I can take this and put drip maps right here if I want to, to make it look rusty. I can go around the edges and use the occlusion to uh, add dust or dirt. I mean, there, this is really a powerful map that you can use to create some beautiful looking textures. All right, so that was the quick version of how to bake an occlusion map using Arnold's render. Here comes the plus side. Here's my flashy logo that I just created for you because I enjoy the, uh, making these videos. So I created this flashy logo. Here it is. This is the reason why it's called Academic Phoenix Plus, And this is the extra part, the plus side. All right, so the cool thing about this baking is that you are not limited to occlusion. You can assign a new material. You can go to Arnold, let's use an AI standard and let's grab jade for example it almost looks transparent so i might want to make it solid i mean you could put a little transparency but it's not going to read of course if we try to render it we're not going to see very much because there is no lighting so i'm going to do a basic sky dome so arnold lights sky dome and now if i render you're going to see this fancy looking thing i'm going to rename this desk geo so let's say I'm going to call this Jade Desk and same steps, Arnold, Utilities, Render Selection to Texture. Just make sure that it's in the right place. Again, I probably it would increase your map size and your samples just to make sure you get some nice quality stuff and then click Render. It's going to think a little bit. You can always press escape to cancel this. So if there's some sort of mistake or anything like that, you're, you can always cancel it. This might take a little bit longer because it is not just occlusion. It's actually a type of texture. And by the way, this applies to all your textures. So for example, if you have a complicated texture that you want to use, then I'd probably go ahead and uh, use that. All right, let's see. Let's take a look at our J texture. Ta-da! So it's very similar to occlusion. It gives you shadow information, light information, and you can use this to create some beautiful textures and kind of get like the base. Um, it's a lot of fun. So hopefully you enjoyed this. Let me know if you have any questions. Again, my name is Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus. I truly appreciate your support. If you enjoy these videos, please like and share. And of course, if you have any questions, don't forget to leave a comment at the bottom. Thank you again, everybody. You can find more information at academicphoenixplus.com. All right, I will see you next time.